We've seen the S&P downgrade coming through on Friday and that following on from the credit downgrade we saw from Moody's a couple of weeks back. And uh, it's the RAND that's uh, reacted the most. I mean, we've got that local unit sitting at 876 to the greenback this morning. Your view on the kind of activity we're seeing on the currency front? Morning, Lisha. Yes, it does seem that the RAND is suffering quite a severe hangover from S&P, which is to be expected, of course. It would always be the first indicator to show a reaction. Um, if you think back to what happened when Moody's downgraded South Africa about three weeks ago, there was also that initial sharp response in the RAND, but then for the week thereafter, the RAND also continued to depreciate quite markedly. Um, I think it had started before that initial downgrade at about 8.20, and then ended the following um, week closer to the 8.80 mark. So if we extrapolate and think that a certain... Uh, you know, similar events are going to play out this time round, then we could very easily see the RAND push over the nine RAND mark, um, you know, possibly into next week. Um, but then we would expect it to recover from that point onwards. So certainly it does seem that in the short term, um, the RAND could be poised for more weakness, largely as a result of this S&P downgrade. How are you distinguishing between uh, domestic issues that are at play and global issues? Because we've got to take into consideration that we've seen dollar strength come through as well. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that could certainly be an aggravating factor. But looking at the sharpness of the, the adjustment in the currency, and then, of course, based also on what, what we experienced when Moody's downgraded South Africa, it certainly does seem that the RAND is, is largely reacting to local developments. And you could say that that's really been the case ever since Marikana. And as the strike season has extended and, and intensified, um, along with these ratings agency actions, it certainly does seem that the RAND has been under pressure more from, develop, uh, more from local developments than uh, international. Well, to take the conversation to Jacina Solomons. Jacina, uh, moving from the RAND and its response to the downgrade, uh, global data that we're looking at this week? So it's a very busy week in terms of data releases this week. Um, we look forward to a number of inflation numbers from your major economies. We already had the Chinese number out this morning, printing in 1.9%. So that trend of just slow down, a sl disinflationary trend, expected to continue across the globe then throughout this week. And then we also look forward to at the end of this week, uh, towards the end of this week on Thursday, we get the Chinese third quarter GDP number out. So a slight moderation from the second quarter from 6.6%. 7.6%. In the second quarter, the market's expectation is for 7.4% mm -hmm. for the third quarter of this year. Also, that third quarter then being uh, expected to be the trough in this current cycle that we're seeing of uh, Chinese growth. Let's pause on the growth issue. And uh, Vuya, the uh, growth issue with uh, in terms of the downgrade, we saw the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank, uh, Daniel Nelly, he was saying we need to revisit that growth forecast. Now, one always thinks that the official forecasts err on the side of optimism. Here we have one of the top guys saying our growth isn't going to be as good. Yes, absolutely. You've had similar utterances um, from, the tre from the National Treasury as well more recently, and certainly everyone's expecting that they will downwardly revise their forecast next week um, when presenting the medium-term budget speech. Um, but certainly the official forecasts ha generally do tend to be above what private forecasters or market does, consensus does pencil in. So it wouldn't surprise us to see um, you know, some downgrades. We have growth penciled in at 2.5% for this year, but of course based largely on what's happening in mining and manufacturing. And as we we continue to get those m numbers out there's some certainly some downside mm -hmm. risks even to our forecast so we wouldn't be surprised at all to see you know the the, the uh, national treasury and the reserve bank also adjust theirs downwards just you know how's this influencing your expectation uh, you know later this week when it comes to retail sales data so we expect a slight moderation from the previous month so expect a number of 3.2 percent for to, to be posted then in August and for retail sales, slight moderation from the previous month, which is also in line then with our view for where we see the health of the consumer deteriorating somewhat. We also, and similarly uh, confirming, and we should confirm our trend where we see consumer expenditure to ease somewhat towards the end of this year. Our, our growth forecast for this year is slightly more, uh, is, is, is a bit more on, on the bearish side. We're looking for 2.2% gro growth, GDP growth. For, for South Africa Does for this year. Does that shift your view as far as interest rates are concerned? That, no, our view is still, we're still on, on for um, interest rate cuts, um, at least uh, one, one more cut um, going into 2013. Well, let's ask Vuya what she thinks about that because always all these discussions eventually come down to what will the response of the authorities be to all these signals and changes. Uh, an interest rate cut, Vuya? 
it was, we certainly are also in the same boat. We do see an interest rate cut at either the November or the January meeting. We think it'll be largely prompted by what we see, the, you know, the weakness in the local economy. And because of the, rate, the action by ratings agency and the con this constraints that we see placed on, on the fiscal, on the fiscus, um, we don't believe that National Treasury is going to be able to deliver, you know, pull a rabbit out of a hat when it comes to the medium term budget uh, statement. So the onus in terms of supporting growth really does um, fall almost entirely on the Reserve Bank at the this point. Um, and so we are also anticipating a further reduction in the repo rate of about 50 basis points either now, either in November or in January next year.